Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so let me make two key points in this brief uh, presentation. One is related to uh, this particular subject that we're discussing. Um, an overwhelming majority of the executions uh, within the Islamic Republic of Iran are not made public, and there is therefore a complete lack of transparency. And this transparency extends to the absence of data on the numbers, on the timing of these executions, on the ethnicity of individuals affected, on the gender, age, or religion of the persons who are executed. So there is a huge amount of lack of transparency. The other key point, if I may take this opportunity to make, is that almost all of the death sentences implemented in the Islamic Republic of Iran are, um, amount to uh, an arbitrary deprivation of life, and therefore it is a violation of article six of the International Conference on Civil and Political Rights to which the Islamic Republic of Iran is a state party. So what are the two, uh, in, in relation to these two uh, points, what are the key concerns? <coughs> Firstly, if you look at the Islamic Penal Code and if you look at the criminal laws of the Islamic Republic of Iran, you'll find that there are over 80 offenses in national laws that are not the most serious crimes as we know it and yet they carry the death penalty. So just to give you uh, an example of these extensive imposition of the death penalty, you have adultery, incest, rape, same-sex relations, you have blasphemy, you have theft and alcohol consumption for fourth conviction, there's death penalty. Uh, you have national security offenses such as Muharrabe, which is taking up arms to take life or property or create fear in the public, and these are very imaginative you know, uh, widely drawn offences. Uh, we, we are afraid that a number of the current protesters are also going to be categorised within that particular, uh, you know, offence. Then you have Assad to the Earth, which is corruption on Earth. You have Bali, which is armed rebellion. Uh, you have a very serious issue arising of the drug offences. And we have a, a rising escalation of uh, people convicted of drug offences if I have time, I'll go into some statistics. Then you have um, death penalty for fraud, economic crime, prostitution, trafficking in persons. And the key point to note here is that there is uh, this criminalization of activities, such as I mentioned, uh, same-sex relations, adultery, apostasy, blasphemy, uh, for, uh, uh, for drinking alcohol for four convictions, uh, which violate the international covenant and civil and political rights. Uh, because these should not be offences in the first place, let alone uh, having this punishment of death penalty attached. So if I have time, I can briefly allude to the, to the drug offender executions, because the, we have seen a really worrying trend in, uh, uh, in, since 1921 uh, of the escalation. So just the figures from this year, of the first half, we had 80 individuals, at least 80 individuals who were executed uh, for drug offender charges. Uh, in 2021, there were 126 uh, executions, which included five women and four Afghans. Um, and um, I'm not sure if we have the time now, but uh, Iran amended its anti narcotics laws in 2017, and there was a, a sharp decrease from 2017 to 2020 in terms of the number of people who were executed for drug offender charges. But as I mentioned, since 2021, there has been a dramatic uh, increase in these executions. And a uh, few concerns with that. One is that it is obviously not uh, the most serious offense as we know it, but it also constitutes arbitrary deprivation of life in the sense that it targets uh, people living in poverty. It targets uh, ethnic minorities, in particular the Balochis. So, for example, in 2021, we had uh, at least 70 Balochis who were executed, uh, which amounted to 44% of all of the drug related executions. And uh, another disturbing factor, and I think some of the colleagues here have mentioned, is the violations of due process rights when these executions to take place. So, we find overwhelming evidence of uh, confessions obtained through torture, uh, solitary confinement, uh, there is an absence uh, of access to lawyers, um, and even if the lawyers were allowed uh, to represent their clients, 
uh, they are not afforded opportunity to defend the case. And worst of all, uh, you may know that uh, a lot of these drug-related cases and uh, national security uh, cases are tried in the notorious revolutionary courts, which are known for the absence of fair trial, denial of presumption of innocence, uh, the key elements to you know, due process rights. So, uh, so there are these uh, huge concerns. Uh, if I can just briefly take another two minutes. Um, I mentioned to you the death penalty for very big offenses, and uh, my fear is that it's going to be used now in the current crisis. Uh, we know that indictments have already been issued for a number of protesters with death penalty charges, and that's a big concern. If I could just briefly uh, close with one key point, uh, is that Iran is one of the few countries which continues to execute child offenders. Uh, by which we mean uh, that people go below the age of 18 when the, when the offenses have actually been committed. And it, the situation is so dire, it is so bad that girls as young as 9 and boys as young as 15, there is a, uh, gender discrimination as well. But girls as young as 9 and boys as young as 15 are liable to be executed. And in fact, we have uh, seen a number of cases just this year, uh, at least two um, child offenders were executed. And every year we have this deep concern emerging of children being executed, child offenders being executed in this topic in coming to public. I end there, there's a lot more to say, and I'm sure our audience uh, would be interested to talk more about uh, the current protests and, and the, the issue of death penalty, and I'd be happy to respond to that. Thank you. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, I mean, since 16th of September of this year, we have seen uh, the most serious and repressive brutality on the part of any state. We've seen over 300 persons killed by the security forces in Iran, which includes at least 40 children. Uh, you may remember that there was a, a Black Friday, 30th of September, in which at least 66 uh, Balochis were slaughtered. So this is, uh, this is uh, uh, I mean, we must condemn in the strongest terms the, the behavior of the state, but we must go further than that. I mean, there has to be accountability for all these individuals, for these perpetrators of these, I would say, uh, crimes, murders, and crimes against humanity. So I would, I, would, uh, I would urge you all, in the strongest terms, to take action and to ask your government to actually uh, ensure that accountability does take place. Uh, on the point about the decreasing numbers, well, what I would say is that the numbers actually were still quite high, but since Mr. Ibrahim Raisi has been in charge, the numbers have risen to an alarming, unprecedented level. So now we know that just in this year, there are at least 400 people, if not more, have been executed. And the repression of the state is unprecedented, this I can tell you. And uh, the recent crisis has a lot to do with the way Mr. Ibrahim Raisi and his administration has violated the human dignity of girls and women. And I think this person must be held accountable for what he's done. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I, again, I, I'm mindful that everybody needs to be involved, so I, I'll be very, very brief. Yeah. Okay, so um, one question. Um, you know, what, what are our responses? You would have seen the special procedures have issued a number of press releases. We have tried to engage the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, the difficulty and the, the real problem is that there is an absence of transparency in everything that the Iranian state does. And alongside that, there is an absence of accountability in everything that Iran does. Now, uh, you may remember, and you, I, I hope that you know that uh, Gina Masamini was killed by the state on the 16th of September, but unfortunately she was not the, the only young woman or the girl who has been killed by the state. There are, there are, uh, these are these large figures of uh, young girls and women, young people, who have been killed by the state, including, as I mentioned, for at least over 40 children. So there is a complete lack of transparency, complete lack of accountability uh, in what, uh, what the Islamic Republic does. We've been consistently trying to engage with them, but they, have, they are not responding to me. Uh, they might be responding to some other procedures, but certainly they are really scared of what I'm telling them, so they don't want to engage with me. Um, on the point of uh, Kevin Prison, uh, as you know, 
there was a fire and according to the state uh, official uh, acknowledgement, uh, at least eight prisoners were killed in those fires and uh, they have not been, again, they have not been transparent. They have given a version which is uh, unsustained, which is unsustainable. Uh, I understand that many of the prisoners were transferred to other prisons and they are in very dire, very serious situation. Again, we are trying to engage Islamic public around, but not, uh, with not much success uh, is forthcoming. On the point of uh, the civil society and the bar associations, I would say that is, you know, I really appreciate and applaud all of these efforts because they bring pressure on the, on the international community and on the states themselves. Uh, now, while uh, the civil society outside of Iran is, you know, uh, is active, unfortunately within Iran, uh, the Iranian authorities have killed off all efforts to establish any form of civil society organizations. Some of you may know that the Imam Ali uh, organization, which used to do a lot of, uh, you know, commendable jobs, including supporting people on death penalty, child offenders, it was laid off, it was made redundant by the state itself. Um, so uh, there is a real uh, issue uh, uh, in that sense. Uh, what I would urge you, as I've just said before, individually, collectively, to put the maximum amount of pressure, take uh, these protests uh, out, uh, so that the international community recognizes uh, the very serious uh, violation of human rights, as I said, uh, uh, crimes against humanity being uh, conducted on a large scale, killings of protesters being conducted by the state. So once this pressure is exerted, the states of the world know that they have to take action and therefore uh, we will see an international, uh, international investigative mechanism being established to hold, hold all of these perpetrators accountable for what they have been doing at least since the 16th of September, if not before. Thank you very much.